Hey, hey, so I'm going to talk about my favorite subject today, and that is how to look more youthful and basically uh, how to produce collagen in your skin and ways to uh, enhance collagen production. And that's the main, one of the main things with looking youthful. And anyway, all of us want to look more youthful, whether or not we spend a lot of time on it, focusing on it. It's different for everybody. The less you can do to stress about it, the better, because you know, in the long run, a lot of things are, play a uh, role with genetics is a big thing, but there's other things you can do aside from that. So don't get stressed out about because that stress is not going to help you produce more collagen. And I've done a few videos discussing this and I've got, uh, basically there's a PubMed article uh, that was published. And I just read it and I'll link to it below because it really goes through a lot of these uh, in great deep depth and more detail. So it might be worth checking out the, that link below. Um, okay, I'm just summarizing it in layman's terms or in a term that somebody like me could understand. Oh, look, my nails, aren't they fun? My, I bought like a powder, that's a mirror powder, my nail gal did it for me, so. Okay, so collagen, that's what gives us bouncy, firm, youthful looking skin. Uh, helps uh, with wrinkles, the more collagen we have, the less wrinkles, the less they're noticed. And the older we get, the less and less collagen our body produces and therefore we get wrinkles, we get fine lines, we get sagginess, creepiness, all of that not good stuff. Okay, so first topic, retinoids. They're one of the most proven, studied, and researched uh, ways to prevent uh, wrinkles and things like that. It, retinol works by inducing the biosynthesis of collagen in skin and promoting skin cell turnover. I've got a couple to recommend. The first one, Geek and Gorgeous A Game. There's a five or a 10. The 10 is stronger. The five is a little bit weaker. They're both great forms of vitamin A or retinol, which is stronger uh, form of retinoid. Another good one, both the ones from CeraVe are really good. The Skin Renewing Retinol Serum or the Resurfacing Retinol Serum, they're both good and very affordable. There's tons of good vitamin A products. Uh, you can certainly check out some of my videos on vitamin A and retinoids. There's a lot of great ones out there. Uh, Altrino's Tretinoin, which is a prescribed retinoid, and that one is also uh, worth checking out. So retinoids are going to be our biggest friend. The older we get, if your skin tolerates it, go for it. If your skin doesn't tolerate retinoids well, uh, Bakuchiel is a great alternative to it, which is shown to have some of the same benefits as retinol. Okay, next up, my personal favorite ingredient, vitamin C or ascorbic acid. Topical use of ascorbic acid, typically between the percentage of 5 to 20%, when a, at a pH of under 3.5%, uh, has been proven to increase collagen production in skin even hours after it's washed off. So you can put it on in the morning, wash it off at night, and that vitamin C or sobric acid is still working in your skin to help with collagen production. And it works even better when combined with ferulic acid and vitamin E. It helps lessen the appearance of wrinkles, dark spots, and skin texture issues as well. Uh, a couple ones, in my opinion, that are worth trying. Geeking Gorgeous Sea Glow, it's 15% ascorbic acid. It also contains the ferulic acid and vitamin E. It's also at a proper pH, and it's also ridiculously affordable. Another good one I'll link to below is the Dr. Brenner Vitamin C Serum. It also contains the ferulic acid and vitamin E, and it uses 15% ascor or 20% ascorbic acid. So that one might also be worth checking out, so I will link to that one below. Uh, next up, peptides, polypeptides, growth factors. This article specifically mentions them. And a lot of people give peptides a lot of flack. They say they don't work. For me, using them, it's totally undeniable that they are beneficial for skin. This article mentions it. And uh, they're still somewhat misunderstood, but these peptides signal collagen production and fibroblast growth in skin. So it might not necessarily be that the, the peptides themselves soak in and make this, but maybe they signal the things in our skin, which is why a lot of the times they're called signal peptides. Uh, so for me, my favorite ones at the moment, and this one also includes growth factors, the Revive Serum, Ultimate Serum, amazing. Uh, I'll link to this one below. Pretty darn uh, affordable as far as growth factor serums go, because you can spend a lot more money on ones like uh, the Skin Medica one, this one's about three times the price and about half the size, or you can go with the Revive Serums, which is really wonderful. Uh, the Theramid Copper Peptide Serum, another one I really enjoyed, Copper Peptides. There's other peptides in here as well. I believe it's 13% peptides, 3% copper peptides. 
And then uh, last but not least, the Akira Radically Rejuvenating Whipped Night Cream, probably the most affordable on this list. It's a good moisturizer, very similar to the Drunk Elephant Proteiny in terms of ingredients. The texture is a little bit thicker though. So those are, in terms of topical ingredients, some of the best. Other things you can use, microneedling. Uh, microneedling, especially when used in conjunction with topical products, you put the topical products on, you microneedle it, and it also helps those get absorbed. Uh, typically, I like to use copper peptides for that. Um, causes micro damage in the skin, which sends messages to the body to produce collagen to heal this damage. And used in conjunction with other topical products, especially peptides, it's even more beneficial. So um, if you don't have like a doctor pen or anything like that, go see your esthetician. My esthetician does a great job at it. It's really helped a ton, especially in the last, uh, I think I've done it three times this year and it's been amazing. I'm going to go see her again, uh, actually tomorrow. So fingers crossed. Next up, lasers. There's a lot of different lasers. There's at-home lasers, which I use these a lot, but the ones in the uh, dermatologist or esthetician's office are going to be a lot stronger. Uh, there's ablative and non-ablative lasers, uh, depending on how... Um, how radical you want to go. The, the ablative ones require a lot of downtime. The non-ablative ones heal pretty quick and you can usually go about your business the next day. Uh, many of them help with collagen production and the skin heals after these lasers uh, are used on your skin. The skin heals and it produces more fresh skin. A lot of them are um, CO2 lasers is a big one. My friend has been using CO2 lasers on uh, an area that she had surgery on for skin cancer and really can barely tell anything happened there. So it's pretty amazing. Another big thing, diet. Diet uh, plays a role in it. Uh, adding certain foods uh, into your diet may help your skin produce more collagen and your body produce more collagen to be more helpful to the rest of your tissues and organs and skin. So a lot of people don't get enough of it in their diet. A bone broth is a good one. Protein rich foods beef, chicken, fish, eggs, things like that. Vitamin C rich foods, making collagen in your skin requires vitamin C. So citruses, uh, peppers, green peppers, red peppers, tomatoes, and then obviously dark green leafy vegetables. That's my least favorite on this list. Um, anyway, I should try a uh, blend. What are that smoothie? Because then I heard you don't taste them so much. There's other ways to increase collagen production. Uh, red light therapy, it's still being studied uh, how it works and a lot of more research is going on in terms of that, but uh, light therapy, uh, cell luma, things like that, devices can help. Uh, antioxidant topical products to prevent damage. Radio frequency is mentioned in this article. I've tried the radio frequency, I've tried the microcurrents, I've tried a lot of these other things, but for me, I've really only found for at-home things, the at-home lasers work and then micronail. I just, I've tried the radio frequency and things like that, but maybe I need to try it again, I don't know. I tried a lot and I just wasn't overly impressed, but maybe I was impatient. Chemical peels are another good one. Chemical peels can help again, uh, kind of peel off that superficial layer on skin and then it helps heal and produce more collagen. AHAs are a good thing too on a daily basis. AHAs of 10%, specifically glycolic acid, and if the pH is proper, those help with collagen production on a daily basis. Um, and then another one they mentioned was hormone replacement therapy. So if your hormones are out of whack, perhaps your body isn't running as efficiently as it could be, and therefore you're not producing all collagen, you should. So I guess there's probably tests you can take or at your doctor's office to have them checked, especially probably women. Uh, probably postmenopausal things like that. So that might be something certainly worth checking out because they're finding when your hormones are in balance, your, your body works much better, it's much more efficient, and it can use all these resources and nutrients better than uh, if we're all out of whack. Also, they mentioned uh, to prevent collagen loss is always going to be the best way. Using sunscreen every single day is going to be your best friend in the long run. Uh, having a daily skincare routine, they mentioned, just cleansing and taking care of it and applying these good products. Avoiding smoking is going to be a huge one. So if you smoke, try and quit or use, there's resources, uh, what is it, there's the gum to quit. Uh, dealing with stress better. Stress produces cortisol in your body, which is a not good hormone and it ages us. 
So the more stress, the more cortisol, and it's not a good thing. And then they also mentioned things like daily exercise can be huge for uh, your body and your your cortisol levels and your stress hormones and everything else. So exercise every day is going to be a huge thing too. So uh, anyway, so there's a lot of good topical things you can do. And then the older you get, the topical things, I mean, they're still benefiting you, but your body starts to age faster and these topical products can really help out. So I think then you get to some of the more invasive things like the lasers and the microneedling and things like that. Uh, and then this article also mentions some certain fillers and things like that. I'm not, I don't go crazy about that type of stuff, but it does mention them. The other thing it does mention, and I've heard this now at a couple places, whereas these, uh, these collagen drinks, uh, I think VitaFit is another one or Vital Proteins is another one. A lot of, I really dismiss these as not being super effective, but now I've read it and heard it in two different places where these may actually be more effective than we realize. Uh, I don't know. I got this one in a beauty box and you can tell I was really excited about it because it's still out there. I just, I can't get past the taste, but uh, this study mentions it, and I think it adds in some of these sources of proteins and rice, and I don't know. I, I just, my, my brain is still very skeptical of them, especially with the rapid pace of all these different brands releasing them and the price of all of them. But this article mentions that they may be beneficial, and I also heard uh, Dr. Doris Day is a prominent dermatologist. She was interviewing someone on her show about them, and Another one they mentioned, they don't really understand why, but some people do notice benefits from this. So I don't know. You know what? It's got other vitamins in here. So I mean, it's definitely not going to hurt you. But I, with the price of some of these, uh, I don't know. The one thing I do take now every day and it, uh, is NMN. NMN, nico, nicotinamide mononucleotide. It's supposed to be really good for anti-aging. So that. And then there's another supplement, NAD Plus, which is another one. Uh, I just started this like in the last week, so I can't say anything, but if you study this NMM, it might be, it might be the fountain of youth. I don't, you know what? Maybe I should just mix these both into my same drinks and then just get the terrible taste out of the way and see if anything benef helps, benefits me. I don't know. I started taking a selfie now every few days, so I have a better log of everything going on. I wish I would have done that from the get-go. I don't know why I didn't. Laziness, I guess. Or I just didn't want to see myself without makeup on on a regular basis in a picture. But anyway, so I guess I'll maybe be able to track a little bit better. But I wish I would have started doing it sooner because I think it would have been amazing to look back two years ago. Anyway, especially my hyperpigmentation melasma. So anyway, interesting hearing from you guys if you have any tips, thoughts. All this is just my conjecture from this article. Obviously, do your own reading. Make your own decisions. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to anybody else. Listen to what your brain says and what you deduct from this article. So, and I'll link to that below, and I'll link to these other products as well. So, thank you so much, guys. I will see you more tomorrow. Okay, bye.